Good afternoon. I'm Al McFarland. Welcome to The Conversation with Al McFarland. Today is Monday, January 9th, 2023. And actually, it's the first day of our new season. And I want to take a minute to thank you all for being here. Thank my guests who are going to be on today. I'll introduce them in a minute. And thank you, community, for having a, uh, a commitment to conversation, to examining the value of our connection and of our ability to ideate, to think, to imagine futures, strategies, uh, narratives that end up <clears throat> with our people winning. Well, uh, we want to begin this year's program uh, examining art and culture. And uh, in a few minutes, I'll bring my guest on. My guests are Robert Powell and Takumba Tyrone Aiken. Uh, Robert and Takumba are both dear friends. I've known Takumba. Uh, for maybe like 25, 30 years, maybe longer than that, since about the 70s, I think. But I've known Robert from uh, my first breath. He's my first cousin, my elder, and a person that I've adored, that I love, that I respect, and I've looked up to all of my life. And uh, every chance I get to talk with Robert and his brothers and sisters, uh, I enjoy it. Uh, his brother, Burnell Powell, is a regular on our Thursday series. We call it the the companions, and he uh, uh, is a delight. <clears throat> the whole family is, so I'm glad to have them on. Robert Powell is the creator and the owner of Portfolio uh, Art Education Center in St. St. Louis, Missouri, uh, is an artist, a sculptor, and uh, a force of light uh, in the community. Ta Tyrone, Takumba Tyrone Aiken has been a fixture and is one of the leading uh, artists in Minnesota, and I think in the country, and we'll talk about our friendship. Uh, we see ourselves, I see him and me. He sees me as fellow uh, space travelers. Uh, we bond around uh, talking about Sun Ra and the, uh, the omniverse and, and beyond that. So art and culture, uh, it's gonna be a great conversation. I wanna also uh, talk about uh, uh, when I talk to Robert and Takumba, things like how art and culture and activism have always been intertwined, how they show up in the Black experience. I want to go over current trends and new debates in the art world, what these trends mean to artists of color, to Black artists. And uh, maybe my guests have some thoughts on what's happening in the world of artificial intelligence artwork, AI artwork, uh, and the role that AI will play in the world of art <clears throat> for people of color. I think that's connected to things like um, What's the other form uh, of currency? It's not Bitcoin, but uh, there's an art. Uh, well, my guest will know. I know Takumba has talked about it before. Uh, there's a currency of investing in art that uh, I want to explore what that means for our people as well. And finally, I want to ask them, what can we do as a community to elevate and support artists in our community? But let me begin with uh, what I call uh, hot topics. This is a new addition to the program. Thanks to Yasmin Hayes and Bosch Bodhi, who were the producers of the show, for helping us rebrand, reorganize, and represent uh, the mission and vision, the work, and the look and style of the conversation. So we're going to be go begin every day with a, a hot topics, just uh, uh, perusing some of the things that are important in the community. One, Insight News uh, this past week had a cover story on the selection of Bobby Joe Champion, State Senator Bobby Joe Champion as the president of the Minnesota Senate. This is new. It's a un, it's the right word for it, unprecedented. We only have had two black people in the Senate at one time, and that was Bobby Joe Champion. And um, his colleague was Jeff Hayden. Uh, Jeff was replaced in the colleague by another uh, new senator from uh, South Minneapolis representing the Somali community. But now we also have three black women in the Senate. So five black people in the Minnesota Senate, one of them being named the president of the Senate, Senator Bobby Joe Champion. Kudos to Bobby Joe. Thank you for your service and your leadership. That's important. I uh, want to also send out kudos and congratulations to my friend, our friend, uh, Representative Ilhan Omar, who represents the 5th District of Minnesota in the U.S. Congress the U.S. House of Representatives. And uh, Ilhan has posted on Facebook, she said uh, on January 3rd, today I'm being sworn in for the third term 
representing my community in Minnesota. She says the seat is not just for me, it's for thousands of people in my district who want a representative who fights for climate action, fights for workers, and fights to protect our democracy itself. You know, Ilhan's case is interesting and, and powerful because she became the first, I believe, Muslim woman uh, to serve in the U.S. Congress. Uh, she certainly was the first in Minnesota, and she replaced and followed uh, the first Muslim man, uh, Keith Ellison, who is now Minnesota's attorney general, preceded her in the seat as the representative of, of U.S. District 5 uh, in the House of Representatives. So a trend is being set of representation uh, and congratulations to uh, Representative Ilhan Omar. As I look through international news, I noticed, and this is important, you all might know actor, comedian, Michael Blackson. Uh, the news is that he's opened a free school. It's called the Michael Blackson Academy in Ghana. And uh, in, in earlier this month, he held a ribbon cutting ceremony in his home in the Agona, uh, it's called Agona Nsaba Central Region. And he said, today is the greatest day of my life because I finally accomplished what I always wanted to do, which is giving these kids a chance to be great. He tweeted, greatness starts with education and foundational education shouldn't come with financial barriers. Kudos to Michael Blackson. Uh, and I think what he's saying there resonates with all of us around the world. Speaking of around the world, uh, I wanna uh, note that in Brazil, uh, the stories are about the unrest, the followers of the uh, former president, the defeated president on January 6th, I believe, uh, stormed the Brazilian legislature and uh, the Capitol was attacked, ransacked by fanatics. Uh, Ilhan Omar posted a tweet about that uh, 16 hours ago. It said two years ago, our Congress was attacked by fanatics. fanatics and now we're watching it happen in Brazil. And she, she calls for a solidarity with the newly elected president Lula and the Brazilian people. Uh, we have a colleague and friend who's on the ground who is our editor now in Brazil, uh, Maestri Yoji Sena, and we'll be hearing from him throughout the week on what's happening on the ground in Brazil. Uh, last note on that is that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez uh, uh, out of New York said that new, nearly two years to the day, the U.S. Capitol was attacked by fascists, and we see the fascist movement abroad attempting to do the same in Brazil. She says we must stand in solidarity with the uh, Lula officially democratically elected government, and that the U.S. must cease granting refugees to, uh, re excuse me, the U.S. must cease granting refuge to Bolsonaro in Florida. Well, that's our hot topics. We want to continue this feature. Actually, let me know what you think about that. If you have things you want us to talk about, we want to do that as well. I want to thank you for being a, uh, a listener. We want you to subscribe uh, and support, share, like our program. We're going to drive our circulation, our membership up at the YouTube channel. So we want you to... Uh, Check us out and see what we can do to build this program. Well, let me turn now to uh, <clears throat> my guest for today's program. And uh, let me bring in both Robert and Takumba. Uh, brothers, gentlemen, how are you? Doing well, doing well. L let me introduce you uh, properly. Robert Powell is the founder and executive director of Portfolio Gallery and Education Center. And Takumba Tyrone Aiken, uh, I have him listed as an art educator, but as an artist, a general uh, a spirit man who's bringing and doing creative work. Uh, I call Takumba kind of a medium, uh, one who has uh, like the Colossus a foot in the other world and a foot in this world and able to transfer knowledge, ideas, thoughts, images, uh, blessings, healings, warnings between the two worlds. Takumba, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing fine, Al. It's good to, good to be here. Mr. Powell, it's good to see you again. Good you also, you. you also. 
Well, so listen, let, let me do this. I've got some questions um, that I mentioned earlier, but let me start with uh, asking you all to give your own story about where you stand right now as an artist. Uh, Robert, you've been producing and curating and presenting and educating people about art. And let me ask you to take a couple of minutes to, uh, if, to introduce yourself to people that might not know your story, uh, but to hear it in your own words. Well, Al, thank you for inviting me to be a part of this uh, conversation. Uh, I am the founder and executive director of Portfolio Gallery and Educational Center, an organization I founded 34 years ago now <clears throat> as we enter January 2023. Our mission is to educate and enrich lives and foster a greater awareness of art created by the African-American visual artists. We use as our vehicle art exhibits, classroom instructions. Uh, we provide commissions, uh, projects. We infuse art into the conversation, utilizing uh, artists that we have met and been on a journey with for these 34 years. So we are trying to put art and particularly the African-American visual artists. I challenge people for years to name five nationally known African-American visual artists living or dead. Who might they be? Who are they? And it's not, in my mind, a really answer to that. You know, people will start naming. But I always say, now, I want you, when you name this artist, we should be able to go to Topeka, Kansas, Tucumcari, New Mexico, and they know this artist, too. You know, that's what I'm talking about, our national. And I feed them or give them a way out by saying, Okay, the name five artists that you have ever heard of that are out there. And of course, I get the Picassos and the Monets and, you know, mm -hmm. people who thousands of years, you know, we have grown to believe are the masters of art, you know. So our journey has been presenting, doing art shows. We uh, are starting the year. We have a group three-person show uh, here in St. Louis at the Kathy Gregory uh, Gallery here in St. Louis. We'll be featuring three artists there. And uh, in June, uh, we will be in Hannibal, Missouri, celebrating their first annual Juneteenth celebration, and we are putting an exhibit together. And I heard my good brother Atkins said he doesn't have anything planned, but if he go, but if he goes to my website at Portfolio Gallery S T L dot or uh, there's a call for artists with some instructions telling you about it, being able to look up our, at our website and it's in conjunction with Jim's, Jim's Journey, which is a, another not-for-profit arts organization in Hannibal. And Jim of that title, Jim's Journey is the person that Mark Twain based the story on. And I can't call that person's real name, but there's a, a story going around that the story is based on this black guy who lived there in Hannibal, Missouri. That's who Jim was. Mm -hmm. So we're hitting the floor running, uh, trying to, as I say, keep art as a vocal point. 
Uh, I've come to believe that art is important because you can't have the earth, you can't write earth without art. <laughs> and you, you can't have a party without art. I mean, it's in too many things. You can't have a heart without art, you know, there. So art is important and uh, it's up to us to, you know, define it, you know, what's good looking. Hey, <laughs> who you asking, you know? So that's about all I can say in that, as that uh, introduction now. Uh, Robert, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna come back to you, you've got a gazillion questions. Uh, and the ones that we opened up with suggesting as topics we'll cover. Let me bring Takumba in though. Brother Takumba, how you doing, man? I'm well, I'm doing well, doing well. So, uh, uh, same brother, thing, man. Just do an opening uh, statement uh, on, on Takumba Aiken. I'll say ditto and I'm done. No, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. He said my line. He said my line. You can't have art without heart. You can't even spell heart without art. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Brother, he knows what's going on, you know. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm actually one of those weird uh, uh, anomalies. I'm a working, living artist. I have been since I did my first show in 1958. My father made me do it so I would be uh, proved that I couldn't make any money doing art. My mother said, let them do an exposition. So we did the exhibition in the basement for three days, for two hours, uh, six hours. I made $657.36 in 1958. That was a hundred dollars for every hour. None of which I saw until I was uh, sixteen or seventeen. How old were you then? In fifty-eight to go. I was six. I was six, so I made a hundred dollars for every year I was born. Ah. you know. But I had a lot of stuff, and he just challenged me. And my mother was like, "Aha! Now we got it." And so yeah. I maneuvered this whole thing so that I did a show in my dad's hand-built basement, which I realized later that he was a master craftsman. You know. But then I just thought it was, everybody had a nice basement like this, you know, and he kept on looking around to see if anybody took his stuff. And I'm like, why would they take his stuff? <laughs> you know, so I ended up, um, it, the beginning of my art world became my challenge in the art world. Because I always had a thing about doing better than I had done before. That's what was installed, instilled in me with my grandmother and my grandparents and my uncles and aunt. So uh, it took a couple of years. But I kept on moving on into many things like I was at Festac 77. You know, I was like 24 years old, maybe. A uh, big festival in uh, Lagos, Nigeria, representing artists from all over the world. You know, um, but my whole thing is I've always had to feel like I had to play in two different worlds. Because, you know, the art world that I, I play in now, well, I play in all of them now, you know, but I was never kind of, I was always put them on the side, see if we need them, bring them in. But now I'm not on the side. I just am in, you know, and I do stuff. I have work in major museums, things like that, world, works around the world. Uh, but nothing's as sweet as doing a, a, a show in a coffee house in your neighborhood, you know. And so um, now, I'm a, now, I, I, now I'm a, a, a 2022 Guggenheim Fellow. And so what does that mean? Well, it meant I applied nine times and got it on that 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 ninth time, I, you know. So, so it's it's about being persistent. Oh, by the way, this is my works behind me. Uh, all kinds of uh, things that support me and keep my spirit up. And I am a. Uh, my mother was a healer. Uh, she died on my twentieth birthday, December 29th, That just passed the anniversary, and she passed on this. She would lay on hands, I guess I'll lay on the brush, right? Mm -hmm. And I try to find uh, images and spirit-driven uh, images that can speak to somebody, but only to them individually, you know? And, but the people find some common thread in there that they can speak about, which means that you're not talking about art when you're talking about my work, you're talking about uh, uh, living, religion, uh, social, you know, everything that's out there, um, because like Brother Robert said, art is everything. You, you can't point to anything that doesn't have an artist's hand on it, the shape of the bottle, the chair you sit in. You just can't, mm -hmm. you know? The type that's going across the, the screen, it's all developed and designed by artists, you know? So 
that's kind of me. You know, I don't like to talk about myself too much, but I've been learning, you know, <laughs> trying to learn. Well, I had a question there, uh, Brother Atkins. Yes, so, sir. within the uh, African American art arena, would you be the norm who has artwork in these places, receive those awards, da 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 da, through your art? Or are you still in the exception category? Uh, that's always interesting. I think for the rest of my life, if I got the greatest award in the art world, I might be in the exception category in their mind until they take a look and realize that me and Jacob Lawrence and, you know, uh, Betty Saar and all these other people have been beyond that. Norman Lewis, people go, Norman Lewis, who's that? Was he on the cheers? I'm like, no, mm -hmm. you know, Norman Lewis, he was better than Jackson Pollock. But just mm -hmm. because a certain person that was the art critic at that time, he decided that he wasn't going to talk about Norman Lewis. You know, yeah. but he was in every museum. So it's the thing of, I think I'm, you know, I, 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 my, my parents have always told me to be careful if I'm straddling the fence. Mm -hmm. Make sure your legs are both your legs when you fall are on one side or the other. Right. If it's in the middle, it's gonna hurt you. Yeah, right? that's and, right. Yeah, is that what you mean? Well, I'm, I'm. Uh, I guess you answered it. I, I was would think that most people, most artists are not in that arena that I have met over the years. Yeah, oh, I see what you're saying. They, they are, you know, I don't know as well as Charles Bibbs, for instance, whether you know, he has just been a pioneer on his creating and publishing his art right. uh, just on his own. He found a lane and, you know. Well, yeah, they're pathfinders, you know. And, yeah. and then we're pathfinders. And we try oh, to. Oh, yeah, for make, sure. So people can go in and they're like, well, I'm going by you. Go by quickly. You know, yeah. don't worry about me. I, I you know, I, I, I'm, I'm out here doing things. But if you can shoot by me and get to a place and establish a, 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 a port, you know, a, a frontier uh, a station, go ahead and do it. My whole thing is that I'm not doing anything that I want to keep just for my own. Right. Yeah, right. Even so that it can yeah. be um, uh, mimicked or, or some things to take it. Take it. Take whatever, whatever you think you can take in mind. Go ahead and take it. Yeah, yeah. I just don't take mine because that's I have a grip on uh, how I create my belief yeah. in myself, you know. Right. But at the same time, I never understood it. every single one of these worlds is, is mind boggling to me. You know, when people say, do you do art? I'm like, let's not start there. Yeah. You know, ask right. me if you paint, then we can go that way. But right. there is right. so many facets to the fine arts. You know, and then there's the crafts people that are finer than the fine arts, but they won't tell you that in the fine art category. You know, right, right. The metal and stuff like that. And I'm like, how in the world can you twist and turn metal to make it look like it's something floating? Right. You know? So it's like there's this thing of always. Um, I respect other artists' work. I respect their effort. You know. Uh, um, it is more important to me to cheer on someone than to tear down someone. You know, what, what's the point of that? You right. know, I, when you they, mention Picasso, the people they, that... Uh -huh. They are telling their story just like you're telling your story. Exactly. And uh, they just... Yeah, you don't have to tear them down, you know. Maybe if you listen, sometimes there's a message for you, you know. Yeah, exactly. yeah. But you can't go in and turn it down. Yeah. Let me jump in and respond a little bit. Let me frame what I was hearing. Uh, and I'll present myself as the uh, uh, communicator or the listener and 
described in this conversation, which I think is wonderful and fascinating. And thank you both for being here and for having the question, Robert, and the answers to Kumba, this exchange. And so Robert, I heard you uh, propose to Takumba, how do you see yourself where you are right now? And uh, you were asking um, if uh, Takumba saw himself on one side or the other of a continuum. One side, this is how I'm interpreting what you said, I could be wrong. Right, one right. side is people that are you know, broadly in the community involved in self-described as artists, artisans, creators, and struggling maybe not, but involved in trying to live doing that creative work. And then you said, uh, or have you, because of the positioning of your work and the opportunities, found yourself in a different place, right? That uh, is uh, maybe the goal of the many, but a reflection of a certain attainment. And that attainment comes from being placed in institutions uh, and having the Guggenheim and things like that. Then I heard Takumba say, well, uh, for me, it's not about attaining the Guggenheim or being placed anywhere because all of it uh, is, is only a fraction of who I am and what I'm doing. That where I am <laughs> is not in that system of categorization at all. Uh, that's kind of what I heard. Uh, yeah, respond to that. You know, I mean, uh, you know, they say be careful for what you ask for because you just might get it, right? And so right. when you get it, um, there's all kinds of definitions from people that are already in it, and um, and you assume that it's only one definition because it's the Guggenheim. And people say the museum. Well, it's not the museum. It's the Guggenheim family that has money that they put towards not just the arts, but science, you know, uh, photography, um, all kinds of different areas, right? Politics, uh, writing. And so then I'm like, okay. And I've been, you know, since Langston Hughes, I've been, I've been seeing, whoa, well, there, there's been some interesting people here. So I never know, and they might tell me later who the judges were, but they come from all different walks of life. And the Guggenheim has made certain to spread that out, to see what's going on in the world and to pick those people and say, well, if you say that, you know, we say, and we believe that you're this kind of person doing this kind of thing, could you come and judge for us? And you might not even get along with the person sitting next to you that's judging, but that doesn't matter. Their exper expertise is one thing, yours is another. And we want to know, as you all look at this stuff and decide who those final people are, you know? And so, like I said, I applied nine times. So eight times I felt like Susan Lucci, you know, I <laughs> never got that award. And the ninth time I got it, and I said that to the vice president of Guggenheim, he said, no, you can't say that. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, is that a, do you get sued for that? He said, no, because somebody just applied 44 times and got it. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of person I want to meet. Right. He doesn't right. give up, you know? And I hope that I'm that kind of person. I mean, in any of the worlds, I was always uh, a little bit different. I did representational in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. And then I saw something in the hair that I did and I started doing what was only in the hair and it became what somebody called later abstraction. But I could see in the hair people moving and stuff like that. I just didn't feel like I needed to waste my time telling somebody what was happening. You know, <laughs> you know it's like I play African drums, I play for dancers. I've been in you know, uh, uh, Ghana, Nigeria, Brazil. So there was something else that I was seeing and feeling that I just did it. And then guess what? Somebody said, that reminds me of Ghana or Brazil or drumming or something I grew up with or something somebody saying to me. And I'm like, okay. So I am in those worlds, but I might not be of those worlds, but it's a world. So you, every one of us playing a part of it. It's just trying to find a way for people that look like us, think like us, feel like us, dance and sing like us, write and preach like us to be normal to us, you know, and not only have to say, you know, even though they're choosing special people, I just want them to broaden the base of what that special is. And I, I feel they did that before I came about, 
you know, but I was really surprised as an abstract quote unquote artist that um, they looked at what I've done in the, for the, the length of time that I've done and said, okay, and you know what they told me to do? They told me to go do my painting, go do what you do. I said, wait a minute, I thought, isn't there some kind of thing that you're supposed to do? Like you do it and you bring it back? Then I know. We're saying that you have been doing it. Now we're saying keep on doing it. Mm-hmm. And if there's a way out there that you didn't feel like you could do, here's the vehicles that we'll you know, put in front of you that you can go do it as best as we can help. You know, we can put a, we put prime the pump. And so from priming the pump, now I'm getting ready to go to LA Freeze and, and do a show through uh, Dream Song Gallery where I'm the only painter represented and a sculptor. And that's a pretty big thing because otherwise I would have to be trying to make money to pay my way through, to get my own space. But I don't want to represent myself. I want somebody to hear what I say and represent me. You know, like Brother Powell, represent mm-hmm. me in the gallery. This, you know, we're, and, I, and, I, and I collect and I have done exhibitions. I don't mind representing other people, but something told me you better get back on the horse and ride for a little bit longer and, you know, see what else is out there. And so um, this is an exciting time for me. I just turned 70 and December 29th. I'm ready for it. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah. I still, young, see, I, young still man. I still see Takumba as about a 20 year old. <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> no, no. The you know, I see I, a 25 year old, five years older than me. I, yeah. At 75, I see myself as a as a 20 year old as well. So yeah, I, I'm 77. So mm-hmm. you know, I'm I'm trying to act like that's young. You know, yeah. 70. It yeah. is. I I hear you. You know. But it, it really depends on who you're standing next to, you know. It is, it is. Ninety year old call both of us young men. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let, me, let me pivot back to uh, one of the original questions, and that is how art, culture, and activism uh, uh, are intertwined with what we call the black experience. And let me ask you to reflect on your life as an activist if you ever see yourself with that word, that word might not be appropriate or it might be too restrictive. It might not be the right way or might not be one of the labels that you wear. And whether you wear it or not, the word exists and how and what is your sense of the relationship between activism and creativity? Uh, I think you said it at the beginning, Robert, that you can't have mm-hmm. art without art. Uh, right. You know, art is at the core of everything, and that's exactly what you were saying as yep. well, Takumba. So how does art figure in? How is it centered in what we generally call activism or the movement? And I'll specifically say the bid for freedom for African people, for Black freedom. How does it work? Robert, what do you think? Well, I've always tried to base my art in what I call a positive motivation through art. So I try to give names to my art that would give direction. Uh, One of my cornerstone pieces, and I'm sorry I don't have images, but it's an abstract piece with different levels. It has hollows at the top of it, which I call passageways. And I say, and it, it, inside that opening is, is rough. I left the chisel marks, all of that. But outside that, there's a smoothness. And I say, you know, too often, we as a people talk about and repeat little things that we have grown up with. Uh, how bad things are. And my uh, message is, no, come out of that. You're going through that. You're not in that. I'm going through some things. You know, that means you plan to come out and be on a positive road. But we tell people in greetings, how you doing? I'm hanging in there, man. I said, you don't mean like the jasmine tree, do you? You know, that's not the hanging you're doing, is it? 
Oh, no, no. Well, quit saying hanging because that's my reference to hanging, you know. Uh, we say things and greet each other. And so I've tried to use my art, you know, lest we forget from whence we came. Wow. From our upbringing of our parents, mother and child piece, you know. Uh, how do you get others to see what you see? I, w I smiled when I heard y'all talk about the universe. I said, oh, they, they in there that too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, Al, you remember when we grew up, you know, Church of God in Christ? Yep. But one of the songs was Ezekiel saw the wheel. Yep. You yep. remember that song? Wheel in the middle of the wheel. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that 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 song went away. Mm. You know, nobody sings that song anymore, you know, but it's you know, you use art to tell stories, and that's what artists do. You know, uh, I can't say it any. Most of us are talking about positive. How the the gentleman who opened up the hospital. I think that's all we we would all want to do. That we're not on that road yet. You know, uh, one of the quest one of the questions I thought was coming out and maybe we've already asked it, you know, where are we at in the art world? And who defines that, you know? Uh, sometimes I think we need a new union, you know, but it's all about money, you know? Let's follow that conversation, Robert. And that's a good one, a good point of departure. Where are we? Uh, as you see it, and where do we want to go? So here, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking in part what we have to do is uh, sort of, well, a phrase I've been using a lot locally lately is to decolonize our minds. Decolonize yeah. our minds. Right now, we are operating inside yeah. vocabularies, inside dictionaries that define us in ways that limit and devalue and discard our sense yeah. of who we are. Yeah. And at the so at the core of it is the need for us to believe and then act on the belief that we have the power, the duty, the obligation, and the opportunity to reshape and redefine or to define uh, yeah. with our truth what the world is, what the universe is, and in creating narratives, I said it earlier, write a story where we come out as the winner. And I say that, that our sense of winning might not be their sense of winning. Right. Our sense of winning might not depend on murdering, you know, annihilating, genocide. Our sense of winning might be uh, something that reflects a capacity to share, to create, to invent, to heal, and to uh, be in sync with the master plan of existence itself. To come right. you. Yeah, I, you know, this, this is the thing. I, I always know that what our intentions are and have been is to share and grow and let the enlightenment come. But, you know, when I say this is a bottle of water and they'll say it's a Molotov cocktail. I said, no, yeah. this is a bottle of water. It, it's not even a piece of rag in it. Well, you're gonna put a rag in it, no. But it's the thing of finding the ways to help them see that they don't see. And ask them, do they want to see it all? You know, right. and because my thing was so many times we said, well, okay, we're going to do our thing here. You do your thing there. And they're like, okay, fine. And then they go do their thing and they say, yeah, but I like your thing over there. Well, I invited you over there. No, I just want it. I don't want you. <laughs> I want it. I'm like, uh, let, me, let, me, let me interject. I, I said this, this is another Al McFarlandism. Uh, they want Africa. They love Africa. They want Africa. They just don't want the Africans. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's like, 
you don't get that. You don't get an egg if you don't have the chicken. Nope. Right. Just, nope. Especially if you go and cook the chicken, all the chickens, and say, well, right. why is there any more chickens? And it's like, right. I mean, <laughs> waste society. But, but I understand. It. Cave dwellers are cave dwellers. They don't see a lot of things growing. But then there are other people of European and different kinds, of, you know, the Turkish, whatever, that have grown up with land just like we've grown up with land. But all of us are start, now starting to be compartmentalized, apartmentalized, actually. put in yeah. And so we don't, some people don't know what grass feels like. They know what concrete is. Mm -hmm. you know? right. And so there's all these things that have been taken away, you know, and yo, grandpa is this old grandma saying about this, you know, and then the kid is just ignored until they get to about 13. They finally have to go to a family reunion in South right. Carolina, in Jamaica, you know, mm -hmm. in Barbados, you know, in Africa. And they go, whoa, what is this? Right. right. You know, who kept this way from me? But it's the thing of values, you know, yeah. and constantly trying to. I do this thing where I do as an activist thing. I'll go anywhere, and I'll do a, a, a mural that you can lay the canvas on the table with oil pastel, and it's usually with some kind of community development, some change in housing or something, or some people want to discuss why they don't like each other, but they don't want to ask that question. I'll do this drawing, and I'll do the drawing themes are celebrating our similarities and differences and values. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what? I'm like, just draw what you like. I'm like, okay. But then, but don't worry about the title anymore. Just draw what you like. What is the, the what, what what makes you feel great? You know, in 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 in, uh, in the morning, people start drawing something like that. Next thing you know, this person that didn't like that person are drawing the same thing. When I asked who drew this, this, and this, and they both hands went up and they stare at each other and say, "I drew that." He says, "No, I drew that." And he said, "No, I drew that." And they said, "Why drew that?" And they said, "Because of this." And they said, "Really? That's what I feel." <laughs> Job is done. You know, start. Right. Right. Art, is, art is a thing of, uh, I almost said manipulation, which it is, but it's molding mm -hmm. and building and something. But you can't, I can't do it just for you. I have to do it as a collaboration. Because then when I walk away, you still have your voice, you still have your language with a little bit of flavor and seasoning from me and all the other people that collaborated. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Essence Magazine had an article about new leaders, and uh, we've got a graphic uh, of uh, that Essence Magazine article. So I have a question, and this question of leadership is really kind of important. What is it? And uh, who gets to decide or name who leaders are? And, uh, you know, the question then becomes, uh, you know, are there new leaders in the art world? Are there leaders in the black art world? What do you guys think? Uh, maybe we can pull the article up. Is that up, Neil? Let's see. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, the thing is that um, we should define as many new leaders and stars. And I don't think all the stars have to be young because mm -hmm. the stars out in the universe aren't young. Right. You know? And so, but I think that um, I, I always want to see uh, emerging artists. I want to see uh, established artists, and I want to see re-emerging artists. You know, I, I wanted to do a grant for re-emerging artists because there were artists that were too old for this and too young for that, and maybe did it take care of family for 30 years and came back smoking as far as their work or their music or their dance was. Right, right. Was a grant for them, you know. Uh, and so any of these uh, 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 great and wonderful new talents that are out there we need them. We need them because, number one, they're understanding the voice and the language that's out there to get recognized, you know. And number two, the people recognize them have our leaders, you know. But the art world has to do the same thing, you know. Uh, we have some people that have publications, but never enough, you know. Um, and, I, you know, I, I thought, well, if I just wrote on a, a you know, a note piece of paper, and then went on Instagram every once in a while, put somebody's name and their image up there. Maybe that would do it too, because I'm just doing it. And then somebody said, well, can you, can you scan that and put it here and put it there? And who's that person? And give me some more information. Because I think that's what it's going to take is for us to 
I'm not going to always wait for the dollar to do something. I'm going to do it something. And if there's a dollar to pay for the gas or whatever, that's fine. You know, I've had dollars to, if you were to see my space, I own about, I don't know, 60, 70 works of art by African-American or people of color or BIPOC people because I had it. Notice I said had because I figured now we have it, which is the work. And uh, those people are all a little better off because I was took, took that opportunity to do that. And other people see their work in my place and they say, oh, who's that? And I give them the name. And so it keeps it going. I can only do a little bit. I'm not going to. I'm not willing to do the institution anymore. You know, uh, I'm a young 70 and I want to see what I can do with that. You know, I took 30, 40 years trying to do the African American Culture Center forecast, public art, intermediate arts, and a whole slew of things that I helped start or push. But um, I did better when I was sitting at the Black Dog Cafe at the, in the patio and drawing and painting right there outside and people saw that. Now that's gone. Well, somebody has to do something else. Artists have to activate themselves and the space that they're in. As long as that person doesn't kick you out, they might say, oh, he just brought four more people in here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so there's this thing that the, the dance is, yes, there's that big pie in the sky, but what flavor is it? And do mm -hmm. you, you know, and can you eat it? Is it too rich for you or is it too sour for you? You know, you have to learn to um, adjust to some things or bring the flavor. Mm -hmm. Robert, uh, yeah. the, the education mission of portfolio. And so what is the intent? What is the declared intent? And what is the hoped outcome of being uh, of programming education in art outcomes for the individual artist, but also outcome for society? What do you think? And, and, and that leads to the question of what you all see uh, as the role of art. We've talked about it already, but I'm bringing it back again in our lives uh, and in uh, at the core of existence itself. What do you think, Robert? Well, I think certainly art is the, is the vehicle that we hope to utilize uh, to tell people about the African-American visual artists, that after we, as we go along, some of these artists have grown in stature, as Brother Atkins was saying. Uh, they've done different things, you know, different champions uh, of the art. Uh, my own brother, who we, you know, talked about developing portfolios. Certainly I had a, a built-in artist. And so the hope is to bring those artists in, allow them to show their artwork, develop commissions from it possibly, let the community and the world know about five artists that should just roll off your uh, tongue as opposed to those outside of your community. But, you know, black art is not taught as a part of American art, you know, yeah. with any consistency, you know. Certainly there's always an exception. You know, but how do that was always my goal. I was meeting artists that said, I just want to do my art, man. I wish I could do this. And so portfolio, I said, was born out of a need. And my idea was, hey, we'll all bond together. We'll teach classes, we'll be able to do our art, we'll go after grants together. You know, you got an idea, here's this vehicle that we could all benefit from. You know, if I had had an Atkins who knew about where the grants are, you know, I've never applied to those large uh, grants, you know, seeking, uh, particularly because 
me as an artist has cut back a lot over the 33 years of building portfolio and putting on shows and teaching art classes. So, but if we had a organization, as I had said, lots of times I look at grant opportunities and they say, oh yeah, only in LA. Well, if we had a branch and we knew an artist in LA that we could shoot this to, we could apply for it. You need to be part of a not-for-profit, da 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 Well, here we are, you know, and we have a network that works together, you know. Uh, that's what could happen and would be an outcome that I'd like to see. Uh, you know, the other one, if it just as a sidebar, we have here in St. Louis what a, an entity called the Zoo Museum District. Five entities, the Art Museum, Science Center, Botanical Garden, History Museum, and the Zoo. They split $85 million of tax money per year. There is legislation in Missouri to establish an African-American sub-district, which would allow the establishment of an African-American institution. How do you get it on the ballot? Who pays for it? My voice has not been uh, loud enough, effective enough, you know, but that would be the outcome that really needs to have an institution that could support as a focus, just like, you know, the history museum and the art museum, they bring in, I tell people, you know, I'd like to bring King Tut to St. Louis too, mm. but, but I don't have those angel makers on my board, you know, mm. but that's the outcome, yeah to have our own, to build the hospital, to, you know. To yeah, it's a constant, it's a constant thing. I mean, I've served on boards, you know, so yeah. that you can see and hear me. Yeah. Not, I don't know if I knew anything until I said something that I didn't agree with. Right, right. Or, or agreed with, you know, but um, there's institutions, uh, we have a great elder, Mahmoud Okati, uh, uh, was a historian, uh, he's still alive, um, at McAllister, and the one thing that a, a collaborative partner of mine, Say Two Jones and I, uh, will always remember, he said, you have to become an institute builder, an institute builder, build the institutions. And, right. Uh, and so, you know, uh, I've had many hands and things. I didn't think I was knowledgeable about anything but learn, you know, but I, I also steer artists to be careful, you know, because we do become the teachers and administrators and then we go, oh man, my chops aren't any good, you know? And you right. the horn right. when you used to, or or have the thing. You can get back to it, but it's the struggle of doing that and saying, well, I've already got here. I can make it work better here. Let me stay here. You know, let me right. identify who these other talents are. And we have a thing here, and I think these collectives have been developing all over the country, African-American co uh, collectives, like Rojo Collective we have here. And it's primarily African-American. It, it, people are welcome to come there, but primarily African American with the deep understanding of institutionalizing and getting, you know, uh, all of us artists that do get the calls for artists and to us, we send them to them. People will say, mm -hmm. well, why don't, you send them? why don't you keep it yourself? I'm like, what are you talking about? You mm -hmm. know, they gave me the whole Kentucky Fried Chicken franchise. I'm going to eat all the chicken. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. I'll train some yeah. people, some train some people, then have people to come. You know, it's so it's like, Letting it spread out, not tsunami, and it just drowns everybody, knocks them all over, and they don't know what they're doing. But literally training them to read, you know, the call, understand mm -hmm. what the calls for, understand what they mean by the, the digital image and the DPI and the size. Mm -hmm. You know, all these things are really learnable. But when you get it all as a boom, right, it gets, it gets crazy. But you have like Rojo Collective. I mean, there are places. We have arts organizations that do that, like Springboard for the Arts. That's for anybody, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we, have we, we used to have one Springboard to Learning here. 
Yeah, so those things are the things that, you know. But it wasn't a, it wasn't a African American developed organization. I mean, it's, that's the yeah. thing. If, they don't, if we don't have it, we can we have to be part of theirs. And they gotta they gotta look around and say, oh, whoa, wait, wait a minute, we, you know, we don't have our brothers over here or our sisters over here. That right. used to happen, but now it's happening. And the only thing, well, when it happened before, then they would say thank you to Kuma and send me away, and now they got the the plan, the program. Right. right. Program right. Cool. And then we say thank you, and we take that piece and bring it over here. Right. You know, say, can you come and sit in our institution and do this line of training, so I don't have to go look for that money. We'll just say that right. we collaborate on that. But we're a separate entity. You're a separate entity. Let's work that way. You know, because the days, mm -hmm. of, you know, the people that give the money, they're not, they're not kind people. You know, they <laughs> they're not don't do it out of the goodness of their heart all the time. They just have things that they have to do because the people yeah. that they getting the money from say you need to do something. Right. You know? right. So, or or yeah. tax mitigation. Yeah. Yeah. Who's, who's asking? Yeah. Right. So it's, 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 it's always uh, good to look at, you know, I, I remember a, a, a LeClaire Lambert ran the African-American Cultural Center, and he's the first one that started getting me to go. He said, I said, I don't, I don't get this thing with the city. And the he says, well, then go get on, the, get on the board or get on the committee. I'm like, what? He said, get on the committee. Then, it, then when you leave there in three years, tell me you don't understand. Let me jump in again. We're almost down to the end of the program, but you, uh, Takuma, you and I had a conversation a while back about, I can't remember the uh, the term, but had to do with something like Bitcoin, but for the art world. What's that called? Oh, the NFT. The NFT. NFT. And so, so the question is, let's spend a couple of minutes talking about monetization. How do we uh, monetize our, our work, our aspirations, our opportunity to our benefit? Robert, our grandmother, used to say, mind your business. Boy, mind your business, right? Right, right. And, and to me, I took it to say that, you know, church is our business. Uh, health is our business. Education is our business. Uh, law enforcement, governance is our business. And we simply need to tell ourselves that we have to be responsible in charge of our business. Uh, Tukumba and Robert, what do you think? We've got about a minute each to talk about th things like artificial intelligence in art and NFTs. Tukum, we'll start with you. Well, you know, I mean, NFTs having problems right now, but Bitcoin is having problems right now. And they, 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 all it is is like what Svengali does, hypnotize you, you know, and, uh, you know, or gets you to uh, believe that something has a value. So right, right. Say, this has a value. And then somebody comes and says, well, let me put the, you know, $375 million on this one. And everybody goes, $375 million? So then you get a whole lot of people learning how to do it. And I started watching places where they were just wanting to do it. Um, everybody does that. Why is a dollar bill a dollar bill? You know, if people study the history of how money becomes a value of trade, then we can just think of the next thing that becomes a value of trade. You know? Right. And so, I mean, you know, it's like, I would like it to be Tacumba bills, but that, then, then I would have to go in hiding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or, or portfolio bills, right, Robert? Right. Yes, yes, yeah. It, to me, it's just, you know, a group of people who have a, the ability to market a great idea, what if we could, and they just create it. And they, they can flood the market and attract people and, you know, have stories and I don't understand it. Uh, I have yet to meet anyone that has benefited. But, you know, I know opportunity is out there like they're doing the college athlete. Maybe we should be a part of that and, you know, sponsor, get sponsors. And I think there'd be a lot of African-American artists that would sign up, you know. But it's, yeah, how do we get in the spotlight? You know. They have like Instagram. There's this there's there's celebrated African American yeah. artists that don't care to be known. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, let me do my stuff. You see my stuff. Some of them might not even be representational, but they're doing their thing, and then they're swinging their money back into the African and African American community. You know. Yeah. Well, I can believe. I can believe, and not, I'm not uh, saying that there aren't any. That's not. I just. <laughs> 
Well, the opportunity, you know, I, everybody's created equal. We just don't get the same opportunity. Uh, right. We don't go that. We don't go down that particular path. And uh, you know, convincing yeah. people to go down a path and leadership—that's a hell of a. That's a. That's hard. Yeah. Gentlemen, we're out, brothers, we're out of time. Uh, thank you both for being here. Let's do it again. Uh, this is a great conversation. I think we uh, began to uh, touch the surface of uh, deep thought, but we'll come back and do more. I'm Al McFarland. This is The Conversation with thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. And I want you to know that you can support this work, support these conversations by going to our YouTube channel and subscribing when you subscribe, you will receive notifications of when we're live. Uh, it's uh, youtube.com at Insight News MN. Uh, join us, support us, be in community with us. Let's grow something. Let's do something significant, important that will last for generations to come. I'm Al McFarland. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.